What's going on guys and welcome back to another PC build. In this video, we are going to be building an older type of PC. For this build here, I'm using one of my all-time favorite motherboards. This is the Asus ROG Strix Maximus 11. Z390, undoubtedly one of the best high-end motherboards you can get for Asus. So this is a LGA 1151 model. We are going to be doing this build today using parts that I have laying around and it's going to end up being a pretty awesome build. From the parts that I will be putting into this, it's just going to look fantastic, I honestly believe, and it's all going to be encased in this deep cool Matrix 50. Now this is a very cheap, affordable case, but if you're on a tight budget and you want something that's going to be able to fit EATX, even up to ATX, then this is the case for you. Get the mesh one so that you have a mesh panel at the front so that it can bring in a lot of cool air. But before we get into this, if you're into PC building, PC tech, reviews, things like that, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so you never miss any of my uploads. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. So as always, the first thing we're going to do here is prepare our motherboard. You've got a golden triangle in the bottom left-hand corner, and then you've also got notches in the top right and top left-hand corners. You align them with your socket, drop it in, and then next, let's open up slots A2 and B2. Align your RAM with your RAM slot, and align the notch here. Instead of a debugging light, you've got this LCD screen here, which will point out what's wrong, what isn't working, and what errors you have when you boot your PC. This is also designed by EK, so you're able to do a full water cool build using these two slots here, but that's not necessarily needed. You don't have to fill it up with water. However, if you're going to do a water cool build, then you already have these two water ports here so that you can fill it up with water and run your tubing in and out in order to cool your VRMs and keep your motherboard very cool. We're gonna remove these two screws here and we've got two M2 slots down the bottom here. All right, now that that's done, we'll just lift this up. Let's just grab our M2. I'm using a mini M2 here, install it like that. We're not going to need to put in a screw as it is too small, but once you put on the cover, that's just gonna stay put and that's going to be fine. Make sure you peel off your protective sticker here for whichever M2 slot you use. We'll reinstall this and that will push down on our M2 and hold it in place, reinstall our screw. We're just going to put the one 512 gigabyte SSD in it. All right, so that is our motherboard ready to go. This really is a magnificent motherboard. It looks so good. And if you have an 8th or 9th gen CPU still, and you want a motherboard that's going to completely take it over the top, then this is definitely a motherboard to consider. This has got to be one of the nicest, well-built motherboards. And, and you know, anything Asus ROG Strix is very, very well built and definitely up there. All right, so now we will be using a liquid cooler for this. Set up our backing plate before we put it into the case. That way we can install it easily. All right, so this is it here. This is the Cooler Master Liquid ML360 Sub-Zero. It's a all black liquid cooler to keep it nice and simple. This is specifically designed only for Intel. So there is no AMD mount. You won't be able to use this for anything else apart from Intel. LGA 1151 or 1200 sockets. So let's go ahead and open this up. And you know, I've got to say guys, this is really a very nice cooler. Everything is installed, ready to go for exhaust. So we need to flip these fans around the other way. So it's going to be pulling in cool air. It's already got its own thermal paste, which is great. And it's got its own little like intake mount here so that it kind of just directs all of the hot air straight to the pump and keeps it cool. All right, so let's just remove this and take out our parts that we're going to need. Mount and some cables and all our mounting hardware. Grab our backing plate. I can see here that we've got a SATA to PWM splitter as well as a USB to micro USB. We're going to mount our mounting bracket straight on. The way they have shown to install this is to do it via a top mount but this doesn't accept a 360 on the top so we're going to do a front mount and we're going to make this work anyway and we have to disassemble this pc case take off these two thumb screws here on the side slide back and pull off we'll remove the tempered glass panel by undoing these four thumb screws so remove the dust filter on top and lastly our front mesh panel here we need to remove that so we can mount our front aio radiator let's just take this off by pulling on it we can pull this entire thing out and remove our entire front panel for now because I need all this room to mount the front radiator. We need to flip these fans around because it needs to become intake. We'll be mounting it on the front here. We need to set these up in a way where our fans are in fact like so and our cables come out to the side here so that they can route to this side. Okay, so that's the way it's gonna go on. Let's just make sure we get our radiator in place first. Just like that, just grab our screw. Now the screw has to go through the fan and then into the radiator. That's the only way this is gonna work. All right, so that's one in. And we can put in the rest of our fans now. It is a very tight fit for the fans. So you're just gonna make sure that it all lines up. And as long as the uh, screws go in nicely, then you know that it's definitely lined up right. That's all in, got our fan cables where we need them. Through like so, our radiator is in. So let's just push all our cables through first and just make sure that they all fit. 
Okay, so this here. Okay, let's pull them all through. And let's see if this cover goes back on. Oh, look at that. That is perfect. They wanted a top mount, but we made it work with a front mount. Right, so now to get our motherboard in, but in order to do so, we need to install three more stands, as this is an ATX motherboard. So just line them up, like so. So that's a total of nine screws. Guide our motherboard straight in, lining up our IO shield at the back here. Make sure that lines up, then line up all your screw holes for your motherboard. Install all nine motherboard screws. <laughs> screws installed, we can now put on our mounting hardware for the AIO. We're going to need the parts that come with it. These need to go into the backing plate. Install them into each. Using this hex tool that they've given you, put it on and use it to fasten them all the way down. That pulls the backing plate completely flush to the back of the motherboard and leaves these as stands so that you can install this. So let's just sit this here while we install this piece. They have designed it to only go on one way. Then fasten these screws down and it will bring it all the way down. And you do the same to this side, directly across. So fasten all the way. That is now completely fastened. Lastly, we need to mount this right here. I just went ahead and test fitted the graphics card and that fits just fine. So in order to make this work, rather than having to pull everything out and buy another case, all I'm going to do is modify this case a little bit so that I can install the pump sideways. Now, because this is a pump itself, I don't think it really matters too much how you position it. As long as the pump works, it's always going to pump water in and out and around. So all I've done here is I've lined this up where I want it and then I've marked it and now I'm just going to drill a hole there using an M3. All right, we'll just finish off this uh, drill. And I'm basically going to tap an M3 thread here so I can use a screw to secure this. There we are. Now that that's drilled out, what I'm going to do is use the M3 thread tapper. We'll sit it straight in like that. We're just going to slowly make thread into this metal. Back out. Look at that, perfect. We have successfully made thread into our PSU shroud. Let's test it out with an M3 screw. We're going to line this up and see if it screws in nice and easily. We'll go back until it sits in and then screw it in. Look at that. That is perfect, guys. It would seem that I do have to make another hole on the other side because it is a little bit wonky. Just move this out the way. All right, so just using a set square like this, go ahead and line it up and see what it's like, the angle of it. That is pretty freaking straight, so that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Once I marked it, I drilled the hole, put it back in and put these screws in, and now that is solid. Now let me show you how I'm running the cable for it. For the, so the cable comes out through here, as you can see just there, runs straight up and plugs into the port there that comes straight off the pump. This is the power supply we are going to be using. It is the Cooler Master MWE Bronze 750 Watt V3 power supply. I haven't shown you guys what GPU I will be using, but I will most likely use something like a 3070. Being able to just use something like a 3070 is really going to give it a nice performance jump from 1080p to 1440p. So this PC, as you can imagine, is going to give you excellent 1080p performance, nice high settings, high frame rates, although you have to be aware of which games you're playing, what settings you're using, and there's going to be some graphic compromise. A 3070 is not a bad GPU, especially with the specs that it rocks. The new 4070, etc., is very powerful. The older 3070 is probably a very good mid-range GPU, being able to reach that 140 150 frame rate. With this, Cooler Master kind of went for a sleeved look rather than the ugly all black. This is just a much nicer look altogether, so I don't mind that it's not fully modular. Let's slide this power supply in, fan facing down, and then we'll tidy up some of these cables. Get all these cables out of the way and slide in our power supply. Line up our mounting holes at the back here. As always, when you fasten, you fasten an X pattern. And just like that, our PSU is installed. Now let's do some cable management. ATX cable right here. CPU cable, top right hand corner. Three PCIe split cables and a 16 pin ready for a ATX 3.0. Tuck all that back inside and just have one sticking out ready to go. You're gonna be using a 3070 and that only requires one eight pin. It really just depends on whether or not your GPU has two eight pins or a single eight pin. If it has two, just take out the other PCIe cable and plug it in. Now we can plug everything in from the other side. First thing, plug in our ATX, plug that in. CPU, straight in. Now it really is just a matter of some simple cable management, put in our GPU, reassemble the PC case and we're done. All right, so just to give you a quick breakdown of the cable management here, we tucked in all the cables that we weren't going to use. Now, this GPU does end up using one six pin and one eight pin, so we're going to use both PCIe cables, one for each, that way it makes it easy if you wanna upgrade later. Here's your ATX cable, comes straight up, and we use these um, tabs here to fasten the cable. 
all our cables that come from the front panel here, the power switch, reset switch, front panel ports, all that run straight down and then straight into here. And then we route it to where they need to plug into. Bunch them together and keep it there. We're not using any hard drives, so we don't have to worry about any SATA for now, but if we wanted to install some in the future, very accessible, it's just here, plug it in, and then route your other SATA cable. CPU cable simply comes around, up, and plug straight into the CPU there. Really, really simple, guys, very basic, and I have to give credit to Cooler Master, good on him for choosing this design, it looks way better. All right, so now let's just take care of some cables so that they don't just keep falling back out. Got two USBs here, so let's plug them in. We've got HD audio here, we'll plug that in. USB 3.0. But there's also another one down the bottom just here. Okay, so just plug this in, line it up. Make sure it's completely lined up first before you push it in. Okay, there we go. It should slide in nice and easily. And then just push it in. Now, let's put in our front panel power cables. Now, I'm told this is probably one of the most annoying parts of building a PC, but really, it isn't that hard if you just take your time and read what it says. Let's pull these through and let me show you what we have. We've got power LED, positive negative, power switch, and reset switch. Okay, so really simple. Power LED, positive, negative. Positive is on the left, negative is on the right. So flip it upside down and plug it into the top two corner left. Plug them straight in. Right, now we've got power switch and reset switch. Power switch is the next one on top. Plug that in. And reset is right below it. And that's it. Pull back all your slack. All done. This really is a chunky cooler. That's where a pump is. Radiate it in nicely. The cooler is sitting in beautifully. Now that we have all that sorted, we we'll go ahead and plug in the graphics card and let's see how we're going to plug it in. The graphics card we are using in this case is going to be the Gigabyte Stealth model. This is designed specifically for the Gigabyte case that is also the Stealth case. The reason why they called it Stealth was because, as you can see here, normally your ports are going to be on the front here, but in this case, they're on the back right here. Meaning, when you built the Stealth PC, you weren't going to see any other cables because everything plugged in from the back. So that's why they called it Stealth. And when I sold this PC, the person wanted to upgrade the graphics card, so I had to remove this. So this is still brand spanking new, and we're gonna use it for this build here. You're gonna to have to remove two slots here, and also ensure the cables are out of the way. Line up this rear slot here first. Make sure you get it through here. So you're gonna to have to remove that rear slot or else you won't get the graphic card in. Clear the rear slot first, like so. There we go. Now that we've cleared that part, see how it goes in nice and easy. Now we'll just push it in. Just hold it there, see how it looks. Now, if you have a look here, you can see that the cables are just below that opening right there. Now let's just see if we can get these six pin and eight pin into the graphics card. Okay, I'm gonna try and do it this way and then wrap the cable and bend it how it needs to go in order to work. Okay, let's plug it in, six pin and eight pin, just like that. So you see what I'm trying to do now? I'm gonna try and get this in, but also flex the cable at the same time. Okay, so that's going to be pushed in now. We just have to bend it up a bit more like that. And it can work. It will work, guys. Just like this. It's great. Okay. Boom. Lift that right up. Now, it's very important here that you also do not flex the cables too much, that it's putting tension on the plug. You just want it just right with enough flex so that it plugs in nice and easy. And all these cables are free. Don't plug it in. Here we are. Get back as much slack as you can, but make sure it plugs in nice and straight. All right, so as you can see, this is getting closer to our finished product right now. And I have to admit, it's looking pretty nice, guys. I mean, the all black look can be very appealing to some. I personally don't love it, but I don't mind it as well. And what we're going to do to finish this off is install three Black Horse Air standard PWM fans, 120 millimeters, to give it that real nice sleek appearance. We'll get it centered. Now, let's install the other two. In order to cool it better, what I'm going to do is use the top as intake as well. So we're going to bring in cool air from the top as well as the front. That way, cool air is being constantly introduced to the case and exhausted out the rear. Usually, the rule of thumb is to have it as exhaust, but there's nothing wrong with using them as intake as well, especially if you're just trying to bring in a lot of cool air. Let's route our cable through first. Install it. And we'll tuck it through the back here. Right, so fortunate enough, our motherboard here has plenty of PWM headers, so we don't have to use a fan hub or anything like that. We can simply route our cables and plug them in where they need to go. At the bottom here, I've got one right here and one there, and we've also got one more at the top here and another one just above the CPU fan one. So all I'm going to do is route these fan cables to their locations and we'll plug them all in. Here we are. Look at that. That works out just fine. Then we'll just sort out the cables now. 
and then just one last one just here to bring it all together and that is pretty much our cable management done we've got all these zip ties here now we'll just tighten them all all right so one there one there one here one there one there Fasten them all, keep all the cables together. Now we can cut off the uh, slack of the zip ties, except for the ones that are adjustable. We'll leave them alone, which is this one here and this one here. I think it looks pretty good now. We'll do one final inspection from the front and make sure we don't see any of the cables from the other side. All right, so now when we look through here, we can we make sure that we don't see any of the cables through the openings on the other side double check that the gpu cable has just enough flex that it doesn't flex too much where it might damage the gpu cable but that looks fine just like that so that's really good double check all your cables one last check everything looks great pumps fastened now for a final test now that we have everything booted and everything is working as it should, let's go ahead and reassemble this entire PC and then I'll show you guys how you can use that OLED display that I showed you guys earlier, the one with the LED right there, you can see. It is really simple. All you gotta do is download Armory Crate and you're able to customize that to display different temperatures, frequencies, voltages, whatever you want it to display according to which sensors are available. We'll get into that in just a second. Let's put this case back together because this build is done. So first off, we're just gonna go ahead and reinstall the top dust filter, it's nice and easy. The side cover here, and then we'll reinstall the tempered glass and we are done. Sit it in, make sure it's flush like that, and then slide it across. Grab your two thumb screws and reinstall. So next we're gonna install the antennas for Wi-Fi and this rear slot. So we just screw these in. We'll grab our rear panel here, slide it on through. Reinstall our two thumb screws here. We're going to install our tempered glass panel and we are going to be done. All right, we'll grab our tempered glass panel here, slide it on. Make sure all the rubber grommets are on each mount. Right. That is our build finally complete. So now let's get straight into Armory Crate. We're going to install it. And I'm gonna show you guys quickly how the OLED screen works for this motherboard. Right here, guys. So as you can see here, I've already set what I wanted in, in the Armory Crate. And what you need to do first is download Armory Crate, obviously, and then go down here and click on this. It's going to ask you if you wanna update. Make sure you update everything to the current firmware that way you're able to see all of this now here you can also check out your disk info so whatever drives you have connected to your pc it will show here and then you can just scroll through them here but what we want to look at is the oled screen and as you can see here i've already set my hardware monitoring sensors so i have cpu temp cpu frequency graphics frequency and graphics temperature and motherboard temperature click apply and now it will display according to what you have selected according to the sensors. But I wanna show you guys quickly that you can also choose a animation or add a custom animation. Now it will only be black and white, but just so you guys know. So for instance, if I select this right now and I apply it, you can see on the OLED screen straight away, it's going to display the preset that I set. And this is what it looks like. So pretty cool when you think about it. And of course you can add your own custom banner or text if you want. For instance, if I select this and I apply it, now you'll see the banner and then you can apply some writing for instance like just like that and then you apply all of that and you'll see that as well as the banner on the left hand side and that's basically it armory crate is a great all-in-one tool you're able to monitor your pc specs as well as temperatures and your rgb aora sync all that good stuff can be done all using armory crate that's the tower that's our tower before Gaul destroyed it years ago. Wait, I'm picking up a Vanguard emergency transponder. It's fake, but it's not for me. Someone else must have made it too.
Follow me. Sliding down hills increases speed. Stormberg, grab your supply. Your HUD will show what you have equipped. Follow the checklist to access and cycle through your inventory. Well as the weapon you hold. Full key to becoming an Apex legend is completely different locations, objects, and enemies depending on where you're looking. Die fighter. We may even shed blood. Over here, friend. Vision 2 is even better. The graphics are just so much more advanced, and it just looks amazing.
Time to see. How's Pidgey doing? He's a little down today. Misses his cousins. Been a bit of a whirlwind for both of us. Owners of a building, we zone for commercial. I'm so sorry. New York landlords can really be heartless. When they kicked me out of my place, they set all my birds loose. Pidgey's the only one who found me. I've been looking everywhere for the rest of them. But with my bad leg and all... You know what? I'd get around. How about I keep an eye out for him? You do that? Oh, thank you. Bad guys from other bad guys. Not how I thought today would go. Hey, big guy. Please don't screw this up. 
And well, there you have it, guys. I really hope that gives you a better understanding of how the i9-9900KF paired with a RTX 3070 can perform in 1080p to 1440p. Now, I know it didn't do every single game in both resolutions, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of just how it can perform in certain games. Not every game is going to perform in the same way. Some games are more CPU intensive and some are more GPU intensive. In the end, it really comes down to the settings that you're going to be using and whether or not the game is CPU intensive or GPU intensive. Everything plays a role in how much FPS you get and also what resolution you decide to play in. And that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you got something out of it. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. See you in the next one, guys.